Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Hey everyone, so market euphoria is continuing in a big way. The S&P 500 closing at the all time high, extremely strong out there and it's certainly feeling euphoric. And all you gotta do is scroll through BYND, explosion up a significant amount today. Then we have names like Tesla, Blue Sky Breakout, explosion today, squeezing any shorts that entered on Thursday and Friday after the double top just under 500. We've got Apple at all time highs. We've got Google at all time highs. We've got Microsoft up right at the all time high. Needs a little bit more follow through, but you get the point. All time high euphoric market. And what we need to know is two things. Number one, don't fight the bulls. Yes, the market's manipulated. Yes, the Fed is printing money. Yes, maybe it's all gonna come crashing down, but we don't know when that is. I don't know how long they can keep things propped up. And I know that big money wants things to go up and why would I be fighting against big money? I wanna be riding their coattails and picking up my piece, my crumbs from their pie. So not fighting this bull move, but not getting complacent. Right now we're in a market environment where if you buy dips, you get rewarded. If we have bear breaks on different time frames, we get no bear follow through. You can develop bad habits in this kind of market environment. And once we start to pull back, those bad habits could rear their ugly heads and lead to giving back a lot of gains. So just be aware that yes, the market is great. Yes, we're at all time highs. No, this is not gonna be like this forever. This is what one of our members called the money growing on trees sector. No, that's not what I meant to say. Money growing on trees period of this euphoric breakout right now. It's very easy to make money as a bull. It won't always be that way. So hourly uptrend intact for SPY, anything above 327.13, just an hourly higher low. And we're just looking up at 330 psychological from here. IWM, daily higher low established. Bulls breaking 166.45 would change this daily trend. This is what we were talking about end of last week in the market video, how a daily trend change would likely be needed. Talking about how we didn't anticipate just heading straight to a higher high. So if we can see this break of 166.45, the odds of a weekly bull flag will increase significantly. And then it's just 167.12, our recent high. QQQ is leading the way for the bulls. Close at the all-time high, extremely strong. The financial sector starts earnings tomorrow pre-market. And we're going to see the sector as a whole react to those initial earnings reactions. If XLF pulls back and QQQ stays strong, we know the S&P 500 is not going to get any meaningful pullback. If the tech sector starts to lose its hourly uptrend. Anything above 212.24 is just a daily high or low. Bulls have a whole bunch of space to be working with to maintain this daily uptrend, 4% at this point. But it would be notable if XLF had a bearish reaction and if the tech sector lost its hourly uptrend. If we have a bullish reaction in the financial sector, the party's gonna continue. So we know the tech sector is doing its job, keeping strong. The financial sector, with a bullish reaction tomorrow, is going to be looking up at an all-time high. With a bearish reaction, if we break 3046, it's a red flag for me in the short term that the all-time highs in the market are likely temporarily set. And we're going to see a bit more prolonged consolidation than we've seen in a while if that happens because of this double top at the all-time high. And again, I've shown in a previous chart, that long-term monthly chart, where this is pretty much a triple top with where we topped out 2008 as well. So if we were to break 3046, that's a red flag for caution in the short term. If we don't, bulls are just fine. Another point, XLF gave us confidence first thing this morning. And this is how, for me personally, in the last year and a half, two years of trading, focusing on QQQ and XLF has significantly increased my confidence in short term, broader market S&P 500 direction. And today was an example of that where XLF dropped down and was hitting the low of the day. Where are we here? So we started the morning with a little bit of weakness in the S&P 500, just a little pullback, and XLF was pulling back as well. 
We hit the low of the day. We bounced around sideways. We double bottomed at the low of the day. And actually it was a triple bottom at that point, 3068. So at that point in the morning, I recognize that clear support. And I say, if that low of the day breaks, we'll be looking for the S&P 500 to top out for now. We're not going to see the S&P 500 continue to higher highs. We're likely not going to if we're seeing new low of the day in the financial sector. So after that triple bottom, as soon as we change this five minute trend, we know the market is completely fine for the bulls. It was a big sigh of relief. And at that point, it's very easy to have bullish conviction, obviously because of the preceding trend and this, the euphoria in the market. But as far as having that short-term conviction that today's gonna be another green day, XLF gave it to us with this bull break and then really strong close heading into earnings tomorrow. So we'll see what that reaction is pre-market. 3046 and 3108 are the most important levels for me. XLV pulling back, little bit of a double top at the all-time high here. Anything above 145 is a higher low. The XBI strength, or I should say weakness, stood out in a big way this morning, first thing. And XLF, big red as well. So let's look at XBI, big red. So at first, I was trying to figure out what's going on. You know, For me, it was thinking that an individual name had bearish news that's in the sector and it's dragging the sector down, whether it was a trial result that had a bad result or something along those lines. Then it slowly came to realization, thanks to some people posting some news, that it was the market likely reacting or the sectors likely reacting to Bernie Sanders leading the polls in Iowa. If that's a narrative that starts getting spun by the talking heads in CNBC, that means that these two sectors are going to be significantly impacted by any future polls, both bullish and bearish, meaning if Bernie Sanders goes down, the sectors will respond bullishly. And if he keeps widening a lead, then the sector is going to continue to respond bearish to that. That's worth paying attention to. And that would tell me that those two sectors are likely the most reactive to the Democratic leadership polls going forward. So that means we have to pay attention to polls. The election is 10 months away. There's going to be a whole lot more in terms of debates and headlines and all that. So what I care more about, do I care if this is the reason it's going down? I don't care what the reason is. I care what the perception of the reason is. And that might sound a little bit tricky, but again, the narrative is what matters to me. If CNBC starts telling people that the sectors are seeing weakness because of Bernie Sanders leads, it'll be a self-fulfilling prophecy. So if that is the narrative being spun, it absolutely is worth paying attention to. So 145, looking for a daily higher low compared to that level. Plenty of space to work with for XLV. XBI does not have that much space. The low of 91.83 is still holding. We would have to hold that level and break 96.80 to change this daily trend. If we break 91.83, we have no weekly higher lows set yet and further consolidation is likely. And again, that would be a red flag for short-term bulls. Look at the volume for the bears here. And that also gives us a setup where if we see any notable weakness in the market, the sectors here, the biotech and healthcare sectors are not necessarily positioned well to absorb that weakness. For example, QQQ is positioned very well to absorb any weakness. We can drop three and a half percent and still be in a daily uptrend. If XL, if XBI drops three and a half percent, we are in an area without much support of previous price action. So keep an eye on that. The VIX here back to weakness, closing at the low of the day, still just looking down at 1170. And again, I'm most concerned with the weekly tightening ranges where we have our low, high, held support by 30 cents, lower high, or I should say 30 points, whatever you wanna call it. So it's all about 1170 and 1140. Anything under 1640 is just a lower high. And we're coming up on these supports. Potentially worth watching for a play off of those supports. Again, talking about the instruments that trade based off of the volatility index. But not a whole lot of space for the bulls to work with. Gold, base of support on gold, trying to hold here. And it is a battle for the 1540s. Look at this base on the four hour time frame. Bulls would have to break 1563 for any short-term momentum. If we break 1540, you can definitely consider that a little daily lower high and then continued pullback, which would have a zoom out and look for a weekly higher low to then form. Keeping in mind that we haven't seen weekly consolidation from 1445, so there would not be any major red flags looking for a weekly higher low. Bulls would prefer to hold this base of 1540s. 
Silver has a base of support as well. Looks like that wick is not real based on the volume there. But looking at 1770s and 1790s now as a base, 1814 is the key short-term resistance and the bulls need to break that level. Again, this is a skewed chart. Right now, 1778 is our low of consolidation. Multiple daily inside bars looking for precious metals to give us a clear break tomorrow. Miners, daily bear flag confirmed, close at the low of the day. Yet another instance where the S&P 500 is at all time highs, gold traded sideways, yet miners dump. Miners are weaker than gold right now. If you are getting frustrated trading bullish miners because you're bullish precious metals, eliminate that from the equation. I am trading GLD in my longer term account because it's only gold. There's nothing else to be worrying about. And that has benefited me in the short term. So anything under 32 is just a daily lower high. We're looking down at support of 2747. And again, it's just not positioned well where if gold breaks its base of support, we've already broken bull miners support. So what would we anticipate to happen? A more significant pullback. And for those that believe miners lead metals, they're going to be expecting the metals to break 1540 or at least gold to break 1540 and see weekly consolidation begin because it has certainly begun on these miners. Oil, getting to some extreme RSI levels. Four hour RSI down at 25. Hourly RSI dropped today before some weak bounces. I am interested in an oversold bounce if we do not see a four hour oversold bounce overnight and we just drop to lower lows. And if we start tomorrow morning with this four hour RSI at the low 20s or lower, then I'm interested in this bounce. The more time frames that are extreme, the better. And this is not extreme. I want a waterfall drop. And when you stair step down, you are allowing the bears to take an extra breather. An analogy I gave in the live stream last week was, if you're being chased by a bear, do you want to see that bear run straight at you for three miles before it gets to you, which would be a waterfall dump? Or do you want it to run a mile, take an hour breather, run a mile, take an hour breather, and then run a mile and get to you? The answer is you want that bear to be as out of breath before it gets to you as possible if you're going to try and battle it. So if you're trying to play a bounce, you want it as extended to the downside as possible. That's my bear analogy. Natural gas, daily inside bar, if it breaks bearish, our daily lower high is set at 2234, and we then look for a higher low compared to 208. If it breaks bullish, our top has not been set yet, and we're looking at 229 still. So bulls holding on here, but we do need a clear daily trend change and it hasn't happened yet for me. So that's where we stand overall. Congrats again to the bulls. I'm still day trading Tesla out there every day. It's just my go-to horse. The MJ sector saw some nice euphoric strength today for the first time in a while. And Tesla, the opportunity today was the first five minute higher low is where I made my entry and then just rode the five minute uptrend all morning and afternoon. Caution of euphoria, caution of bad habits, do good things, and we'll see you tomorrow. So as traders, one of the skills that we want to hone in on is the art of observation. I talk about that in one of the sections in one of our courses, but an example of that in everyday life is last night we had a tornado warning, which was very strange, but a downpour of rain, and now we've got a whole week of pretty much spring of highs in the upper 60s, and that is very unusual as well, but... What I like doing is going around the yard, and this is why I like gardening so much, is every single day you're just noticing tiny observations. How are the plants reacting to the weather conditions? How are the plants reacting to different nutrients? How are the plants reacting to different pests? How are the pests reacting to different things? And just watching things as they grow on a daily basis. So after today, I just go around the property in the morning here, because the rain happened last night, and just notice all the little differences. This is a big rut that a bunch of rushing water moved around all these pieces of gravel and dumped them in a pile here. We can see the pond is all muddy from the washing water, bringing in a whole bunch of soot. And here's the entrance where the water comes in. And you can see a big old bunch of soot there and there's no water coming in now because this pile of sand right here wasn't here yesterday. And it literally is about two feet of sand that I'm gonna have to dig through because there used to be a little channel right here. And that leads to the pipe and then that pipe goes into the pond. So a significant amount of sand has been moved overnight. And then I walk down here and I can see this leaf line 
And that tells me that this creek overflowed last night and got high enough that this leaf line was the border of the water on this side of the, the hill. And I can see the other side of the hill with all those leaves got a whole bunch more. And fortunately it subsided, but all this debris giving us clues as to what has happened.